Hey, Dennis here. When I was a, a youngster, growing up in the late 1950s, uh, 1960s, uh, politics were always pretty important in my house. Dad, being a working class Joe, um, you know, voted, voted Democrat, and it wouldn't have mattered if it was a dog running. He always said that he would vote for the dog as long as it wasn't a Republican. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I remember one time, and again, I'm not certain of the year, but I was quite young. We went to a parade downtown, uh, in downtown Saginaw. It was probably uh, Easter or St. Patrick's Day or something like that, but because uh, I remember remember it being chilly, and I remember Governor or uh, the uh, govern candidate for governor, um, uh, Governor Romney was uh, well. He wasn't governor yet. He was campaigning at that time, but he was in the parade and he was shaking people's hands. And um, I don't know what possessed me, but I ran right out into the street and grabbed his hand and shook it as hard as I could. Um, my mom and dad never let me forget that. They thought it was really cute. But um, <clears throat> I recently obtained an interesting collection of vintage and antique paper items. There are truly some fascinating pieces here. Uh, one of them, the item you are viewing now viewing, uh, it is an official document naming James C. McCain as a notary public. And it has the official state seal of Michigan, which is very nice looking. The certificate was issued on May 24, 1957, and signed by longtime Michigan Governor G. Menon Williams. He had a most uh, unique signature, to be sure, as you can see. And besides having an unusual signature, he also has uh, a most interesting history. G. Menon Soapy Williams was born on February 23, 1911, and he passed on February 2, 1988. He was the 41st governor of Michigan, elected in 1948 and serving six two-year terms in office. He later served as Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs under President John F. Kennedy and Chief Justice of the uh, Michigan Supreme Court. As Assistant uh, Secretary of State, his remark that what his remark, and I quote, what we want for the Africans is what they want for themselves, unquote, um, reported in the press uh, as Africa for the Africans sparked controversy at the time. And that sounded like a twisted mouthful, but that's how I have it written out. Williams was described by the Chicago Tribune as a political reformer who helped forge the alliance between Democrats, blacks, and union voters in the late 1940s that began a strong liberal tradition in Michigan. Uh, Gerhard Menon Williams was born in Detroit, Michigan, to Henry P. Williams and <clears throat> Elma Menon. His mother came from a prominent family. Her father, Gerhard Heinrich Menon, was the founder of the Menon brand of men's personal care products. Because of this, Williams acquired the popular nickname, Soapy. Williams attended the Salisbury School in Connecticut, an exclusive Episcopalian preparatory school. He graduated from Princeton University in 1933 and received a law degree from the University of Michigan Law School. While at law school, Williams became affiliated with the Democratic Party, departing from his family's strong ties to the Republican Party. Williams met Nancy Cork on a blind date while attending the university. She was the daughter of D.L. Cork and Julia Trowbridge Cork, a prominent Ypsilanti family involved in banking and paper milling. Her brother Daniel Cork was late mayor of Ypsilanti, and the couple married in 1937, and they had three children, a son, G. Menon Williams, Jr., and two daughters, Nancy Ketterer, three, and Wendy Stock Williams. He, um, he worked with the law firm of Griffiths, Williams, and Griffiths from 1936 to 1941. Law firm partners included Hicks, Griffiths, and Martha um, Griffiths, later elected a member of Congress and Michigan Lieutenant Governor. During World War II, he served four years in the United States Navy as an air combat intelligence officer in the South Pacific. He achieved the rank of Lieutenant Commander and earned 10 battle stars. He later served as the Deputy Director of the Office of Price Administration from 1946 to 1947 and was named to the Michigan State Liquor Control Commission in 1947. The governor of Michigan, G. Menon Williams, with Israeli Prime Minister David Ben-Gurion in Tel Aviv, um, met in October of uh, 1959 um, to hammer out uh, peace arrangements or peace deals, since, unfortunately, Israel has always been, since its reorganization, embroiled in 
uh, the problems of their of their neighboring um, Muslim Islam countries trying to uh, to eliminate them. But praise God, that will never work. On November 2, 1948, Williams was elected governor of Michigan, defeating Governor Kim Sigler with the support of, support of labor unions and dissident Republicans. He was subsequently elected to a record six two-year terms in that post. Among his accomplishments was the construction of the Mackinac Bridge, and he appeared on the cover of Time's September 15, 1952 issue, sporting his signature green bow tie with white polka dots. Williams gained prominence for his refusal in 1950 to extradite Hayward Patterson, one of the Scottsboro boys, who had escaped from prison in Alabama in 1948 and hidden in Detroit for two years. Also during his 12 years in office, <coughs> a farm marketing program <coughs> was sanctioned, teacher salaries, school facilities, and educational programs were improved, and there were also commissions formed to research problems related to aging, to sex offenders, and adolescent behavior. Williams named the first woman judge in the state's history as well as the first black. As a delegate to the Democratic National Convention in 1956, he unsuccessfully sought the vice presidential nomination. At the 1952, 56, and 1960 conventions, he fought for insertion of a strong civil rights plank in the party platform. He strongly opposed the selection of Lyndon B. Johnson as vice president in 1960, feeling that Johnson was ideologically wrong on civil rights. And Williams made, a public, has made public his opposition, shouting no when a call was made for Johnson's nomination to be, to made, be made unanimous. He was the only delegate to publicly oppose Johnson's nomination. His final term in office was marked by high-profile struggles with the Republican-controlled state legislature and a near shutdown of the state government. He therefore chose not to seek re-election in 1960. Williams left office on January 1, 1961. His 12 years in office ultimately surpassed only by William Milliken, who served 14 years as post-gubernatorial years. After leaving office in 1961, Williams assumed the post of Assistant Secretary of State of African Affairs in the administration of President John F. Kennedy. His remark at the press conference that uh, what we want for the Africans is what they want for themselves, reported in the press as African for Africans, sparked controversy. Whites in the South... Um, uh, well, excuse me, whites in South Africa and Rhodesia and in the British and Portuguese colonies contended that Williams wanted them expelled from the continent. Williams defended his remarks saying that he included white Africans as Africans. Williams was defeated by Kennedy at a press conference saying that <clears throat> Africa for the Africans does not seem to me to be an unreasonable statement. Kennedy said <clears throat> that Williams made it clear he was referring to Africans of all colors and I don't know who else Africa should be for. He served in this post until early 1966, when he resigned to unsuccessfully challenge Republican United States Senator Robert P. Griffin. Two years later, he was named by President Lyndon B. Johnson to, the US, to be U.S. Ambassador to the Philippines, where he served for less than a year. In 1969, he wrote a book about the emergence of modern Africa. Um, Africa for the Africans uh, was its title. Williams was elected to the Michigan Supreme Court in 1970 and was named Chief Justice in 1983. Thus, like William Howard Taft in the federal government, he occupied the highest executive and judicial offices in Michigan uh, government. <clears throat> Williams left the court on January 1, 1987 and died the following year in Detroit at the age of 76, just three weeks before his birthday. He was temporarily entombed at the Evergreen Cemetery in Detroit, and there was a formal military funeral for him. After winter, his remains were interred at the Protestant Cemetery on Mackinac Island. His New York Times obituary said of William's diplomatic service, Traveling widely, he studied the needs of countries in the birth pangs of independence and brought their pleas for American investment and trust to Washington. The state government's law building G. Men and Williams Building in Lansing was constructed in 1967 and dedicated to in Williams' honor in 1997. And a portion of Interstate 75 in Sheboygan and Mackinac, Mackinac counties is known as the G. Men and Williams Highway. And there is a little background on one of the uh, more interesting governors 
at least of the 1900s in Michigan. 